Hey everyone, welcome back to Cali Plants. It's me again, Mark, and today is another day. It's another cool morning here at the Cali Plants greenhouse. And for this video, we're gonna be talking about Cryptopetalum paraguayense. Now, you might have some troubles with my voice because I just woke up. I actually think I have to record this early because later in the day it will be very noisy already and it will be, I think it will be rainy today. So I think I just had to make this video early on this morning. Okay, so this is our Cryptopetalum paraguayense. You can see here, this is a three-headed two-stem plant. So there are actually two stems here. And I have another one here, which actually has two stems also on my other pot. Okay, they're all in clay pots. And you can see that this is actually a very wide rosette type of succulent. It has these wide leaves, which looks gray green in color. And I believe that the color of this plant only gets cooler if it's in the shade and the color turns warmer if it's in the full sun. So the plant really changes color, which is why it is called ghost plant. This is also called porcelain plant because this really thick, really beautiful leaves actually drop off if they're full with water and those leaves will propagate easily. Of the Greptopetalums that we featured here in the channel, I believe that this one will be the biggest when it grows. So I think it's the biggest size Greptopetalum out there. And also it's one that will tend to grow upright and then it will trail down as it matures. Now, I believe some other people are actually using Graptopetalums as hanging plants. So they have this really big size uh, containers for Graptopetalum paraguayense and then they let their ghost plants hang down their balcony or down their window, which is why I think that it's a really beautiful, really stunning succulent. So just so you know, we're going to be talking about this plant's origin, description, we're going to be talking about its potting mix, its sun exposure and watering needs, and also I'm going to be giving you tips on propagating it and on how to fix the problems that you might find with this succulent. So please make sure to watch until the end of this video. So on this plant's origin, this is actually first described by T.B. Shepard in 1912 and he first called it Echeveria Weinbergii. Now, we all know that Echeveria sedums and Graptopetalums are in the same Crassulaceae family and actually some of those plants way back then they're being identified as each other. So a sedum might be called Echeveria way back then and an Echeveria might be called a Graptopetalum or a sedum. So they have their identification crossed sometimes. So T.B. Shepard, when he first found this plant, he first called it as an Echeveria. But people found out later that this plant isn't actually similar similar to our other Echeverias because it has different flowers. So I believe it was also called a sedum before and then later on it was already uh, moved to the genus of Graptopetalums. On the area where it was found, it was actually found in cultivation in Tamaulipas, Mexico, which means that when it was first discovered by the documenters of these succulents, it was already in cultivation. People will uh, People were already taking care of it in their houses and it's not actually found in the wild. On its flowers, it's true to its Graptopetalum genus. It has marked white flowers which branch out of the stems of these plants. So it's not like our other sedums which has a flower stalk that grows upright or other Echeverias which has a tall bloom stalks. Graptopetalum paraguayense has this really thin stemmed flower stalks that branch out of the plants. So I will show you a picture of that. Also, fun fact about the Graptopetalum paraguense, its leaves are actually eaten in some countries and they're being sold in grocery stores as some type of uh, food and they're packed like vegetables. So that's how they're <laughs> being sold in those countries and they're actually eaten raw or they can also be cooked. But just so you know, if you're going to try to eat this plant, you make sure to avoid a plant that has insecticide on it because it can poison you. And the leaves itself, even without insecticide, can be poisonous in large amounts. So you might want to try just one or two leaves because they can be poisonous if you consume a large amount. Now on this plant's potting mix, I would recommend our usual 7 parts inorganic material and 3 parts organic material. But I believe that other people here in the Philippines or probably in, our, in other tropical countries as well are already growing this plant in um, pure soil. So in pure organic material, I believe some people are actually doing that. And I don't think that it's going to be a problem with this plant. Just make sure that you control the watering because I think that this plant is actually very vigorous when it comes to its 
roots and it's one that doesn't tend to rot very easily especially if you give it consistent light so it's not as sensitive as our other succulents but if you're worried and if you're planning to keep it alive for very long if you don't want to have any problems later on with it i would recommend our usual potty mix you can mix up seven parts pumice and three parts coco peat coco coco peat um, carbonized rice hull or vermicast so a mixture of those just make sure you add less cocoa peat because that tends to hold on to water for very long so uh, if you mix that up this is actually the mixture that i'm using here you will find success with your graptopetalum paraguayense now on this plant sun exposure you can put it in partial sun or in full sun so in partial sun as i said before it will be cooler in color and in full sun it will be warmer in color now also other people which have big clumps of graptopetalum Paraguayense, the ones at the back which get less sun actually turns blue and the ones at the front actually turns warmer in color so there's actually a lot of flexibility when it comes to these plants just remember that in partial sun it will tend to etiolate very quickly so it will grow very tall very quickly and it might have these uh, thin stems and it will also tend to trail down very quickly if you grow it in partial sun. So in full sun, it will tend to grow much more compact and it will have much more beautiful color. So I believe other people find it much more beautiful if they're warmer in color if they're in full sun. I also don't think that it will have problems with burning because this plant has a light coating of arena on its leaves. Just a light touch of arena. It's not as thick as our other caverias. So I believe that it can handle full sun really well. When it comes to watering this plant, you can check out the bottom leaves. You can see here, you can move it up and down like that. So if the leaves are already loose and if they're no longer firm and you can try pinching it as well. So you can see here what I'm doing. So if they're already pinchable and if they're already kind of loose and if the potting mix are very dry, then you can water this plant. But since this is a big leaf type of succulent, you might want to be very cautious when it comes to watering this plant because if you overwater it, it can tend to drop its leaves and also it can tend to rot. So if you want to be very careful with it, just don't water it very frequently. But I would say that if you water it and if it's growing, it can tend to produce a lot of growth very quickly. So for a big leaf type of succulent, this one is actually a pass grower. So when it comes to propagating the succulent, this one is very easy to propagate via leaf. Actually, I have several propagation, leaf propagations here. So I might want to, I might want to see it. So here they are. Okay, so these are all Graptopetalum paraguayense babies. Okay. So just so you know, I also have a ghost plant. Oh, I mean, a Graptocidum ghosty propagation. So you can see here, this is a white uh, leaf ghosty, and this is a gray leaf paraguayense. So they're very different even at a young age. Also, this succulent can tend to produce clumps very quickly. So you can see here, the side stems on that one used to be very small when I first got it, but now it's produced a wider size rosette and also it's producing a little pop right there at the back so I think that it's really nice it's one that will clump readily if you just let it grow so if you don't want to touch its leaves you can just let it be and it will propagate on its own and you can also try beheading it later on if you already don't like the size of the plant so if the plant is getting too tall or too leggy for your liking then you can just behead it just let it dry and then plop it back down on the soil and then the stem that you left on the plant will produce new pups so just so you know also this is a winter growing succulent so it's more active during the cooler parts of the year and it will tend to grow less when it's in the middle of the summer but i believe much like with our other graptopetalums that since it's a vigorous grower so it can tend to produce continuous growth all over the year even if it's summer it can produce new leaves so i believe this one produced a lot of leaves here in my care because you can see that the farina at the center is really clean so it's produced a lot of growth even if it's not winter when i first got it so it's a really vigorous grower so it can tolerate a lot of different temperatures now on the problems of this plant you can have problems with it when it comes to insect mealybugs aphids scale so if you don't want that you can try adding starkology into their potting mix i had mealybugs problems with this succulent i think that it brought mealybugs from wherever it came from so if you buy succulents online and if 
if they're not grown in a very sterile condition so if they had mealy bugs where they came from they can take it and they can bring it to you so if you add circle g on their potting mix it will kill any insect that bites on the plant so it will uh, be absorbed by the plant through its roots and it will kill any insect so that's how systemic insecticide works so you don't have to be plucking around the insects and you don't have to be spraying their leaves and tainting their beautiful farina so with the systemic insecticide any insect you see it or you not see it will die if the plant absorbs the insecticide now also you can have problems with it when it comes to burning so if you give it too much sun and if it's not established well and if you're not watering correctly then the leaves might burn in full sun and what I have here the problem I actually have here is edema so that's the problem you can have if you're growing this plant in a very humid condition and in a shaded area so if you're giving it too much shade if it's not getting enough sun then it will have this edema on the leaves but it's a very minor problem it is not fungus it's just a minor a problem when it comes to the aesthetics of the plant but I don't think that edema is really an issue just as long as it's not producing tons and tons of edema overall I would say that the Graptopetalum paraguense is a very vigorous grower it's one that will grow very big very quickly and it roots very quickly and it's very easy to care for I haven't had a lot of issues with it since adding insecticide to it I haven't seen any other issues with the plants so I think that it's a very resilient very beautiful succulent that you can add to your collection if you have any other concerns or questions when it comes to this plant that I haven't discussed in this video please make sure to comment down below I will try to answer it as soon as I see it and to support the channel please make sure to hit the like and subscribe and that's about it for this video guys I will see you on the next one bye bye